Thank you very much. This is the Reverend Bernard. I come from Uganda. I'm visiting the United States to share my story with the people out here. It's a long time that many people didn't know where Uganda was. I was raised up by missionaries in Uganda uh, who came over uh, from the uh, United States. They found me when I was a little boy. I was an orphan and they adopted me into their home. They loved me, they showed me the love of God. And when Idi Amin became the president of Uganda in 1972, uh, he sent out all missionaries, not just one, but all missionaries. He also sent out 60 Indian businessmen out of the country. Uganda became a very, very difficult country. You couldn't share about God. And during that period of time, there was a lot of killing. There was a lot of children who, whose parents had been killed. And in 1979, eight years along the road, uh, Idi Amin was overthrown. And I was working for a sugar factory as an accountant. And when he left, I decided to resign from employment. And I went over to the museum to the theology. And when I finished in 84, I came back into my country, Uganda. And what happened, I started to bring about all the people whom I led as an underground church during that period of time, brought them together. But these were orphan children, widows who didn't have anything. And during that period, even the Red Cross, Save the Children Fund, is an agency that was working in Uganda uh, to collect children whose parents had been killed. And over the radio, over the newspapers, they were always saying and calling people to come and pick these children from a collection center. I was so troubled about it. Having been an orphan, I decided to go to the collection center one evening, and what do I find? I found nine little boys nobody had wanted. Because whoever came picked up the good looking, they took up all the girls, because in my country, when you have a daughter, when she grows up, they will always give you dowry. So all the good and bad girls, they all took. But these nine little boys, nobody wanted. So I got in and I got con concerned. I asked the social worker who was having these children, what is the future of these children? And the social worker just said, they are going to die, but you can come back tomorrow for better children. And I said, Huh? They said, nobody wants them. And the children were all around me, got in hold on to my trousers as to say, can you take us home? And I said to the social worker, can I take them? And she said, do you have a big graveyard where you'll buy them when they die? I said, give me the Lord. So she gave me nine little boys, no names. And as I go back home, I remember, oh, I didn't tell my wife. I'm bringing back children home. And very soon, I got home, and my wife asked and said, what has happened? And I said, I have nine little children nobody wants. And he said, how long are they going to stay? I don't know. What are they going to eat? I don't know. About clothing and medicine? I don't know. So we prayed over these children, and as we prayed, we took the names of the disciples of Jesus Christ and we gave the names to each one of them uh, but making sure that we don't have Judah Iscariot because they were 12 names and we had 9 children and we started to live a very very hard life we had no food, we had no medicine and slowly many people came in and brought us support they would bring us food but the next question was how about the education? Because I had two of my own biological children. Yeah, because we had already got now 11 children in the house of two rooms. And that is how I told that small congregation and said, you know what? Whoever knows how to read and write, you become the teachers of the children. So we started the school under the place where we are having the church service and we asked all the orphan children from the street corners in our little town is called Lugazi in Uganda, near the source of the Nile on Lake Victoria. And they, so they came in and the people came in to help 
So we started a school. This was in 1984. As I speak now, 30 years uh, from when I started this, I have now 1,500 children who are in Lugazit community day and boarding primary school. And those children love the Lord. Those children now don't know, know and the very nine whom I started with, they all grew up. They are helping me in that project. Some of them are teachers. Others have done uh, different courses. And we are now raising 1,500 children. What am I trying to say? Many people everywhere, you may think you don't have enough, but I think when you have love for another person, each one of us can be of help to another person. I'm paying back what another person did to me by looking after these 11 children. And if we say that our Father who art in heaven, but if a child doesn't have a figurehead of a father, nobody will understand it. So if we can show love to the children in every country, because now mission and missionaries is a two-way traffic, we come, you come. And in this way, we should be able to take care of the people who are around us. My appeal is, I have 1,500 children at Rugazi Community Daily Boarding Primary School. Each day, I go into these villages, try to find who are foster parents who can accept orphans, but so some families where you find that somebody has extra and has only possibly two children who tell you, I applied for middle planning, I don't want. You go to another family where they are already crowded with their own and you ask them, can you help? They said, we don't care for one extra. And what I've been doing is to put those children into those family homes because I believe that orphanages should be treated as uh, a, a home but for a short time, reception home. Mm -hmm. But everybody should belong to a family, not to buildings like orphanages. My appeal to friends in America is that I have children to sponsor. You sponsor one child, an orphan of HIV AIDS because it's no longer fighting HIV AIDS from 1986. We have a population in Uganda of 36 million people, but we have 2 million orphans whose parents have died of HIV AIDS. And these children need all our joint effort to raise them up. The future of any country lies in the children. I believe that if we can help these children then the future of the country becomes strong. Today we are Christians simply because we went through uh, a Sunday school. So if we can help children, there's a future for Uganda. You can help us today. You can help line up with me, partner with me in Uganda. You can sponsor one child for $25 a month. This $25, I'm able to give a child uh, Food, he is able to get a school uniform, he is treated when he gets sick, and a tuition for the school. And I'm appealing to you that you can stand with us in Uganda and we can make a better world and a better place to live. Thank you, thank you so much. Bless you.